Oh, hi there. Welcome to another episode of the Okanagan Gardener and Forager channel. Today I'm going to be showing you 12 edible and or medicinal plants that you could find in the spring. And it's springtime, so I'm only going to be showing what they look like now. A lot of them will look very different as they go later in the season. But when I can, I'll show you some of the traits or how they grow later in the season if they're left over from last year and that might help you to identify them and each of the plants i'm only going to go over a couple things because i'm trying to keep it brief just a couple id points and if they're edible and or medicinal just a couple uses that there could be for those plants now uh since it's short i'm only i'm not going to be adding warnings for all of the individual plants so please take this as a general warning don't just use these plants because you saw this video look for other sources and uh if I can. I'll link to some other uh, resources I can offer for them. Uh, but anyway, with all that being said, it's spring, so let's get foraging! Yarrow, scientific name is Achillea millifolium. The leaves are very distinct, and as far as I know, there's not much else that looks like them. They're highly divided, and they look like fern leaves. They're lance-shaped, but it's the, those divisions that'll give it away. In the spring, you might find, they haven't flowered yet, but you might find at the top of a long stalk some old flowers from last year that look something like this. Now, you might care about yarrow, or I care about yarrow. It is, it could apparently, according to some, be eaten, but nobody really does because it's super bitter. But it is medicinal and it's known for its ability to stop bleeding. It's a styptic, meaning it stops bleeding. It also can relieve pain, and it is antiseptic, antibacterial, and anti-inflammatory. But even though yarrow is said to stop bleeding, it also can promote the movement of fluid, such as by reducing clotting, and to help move body, move blood throughout the body and to promote sweating. So if at the first signs of a cold or a flu, you could have some yarrow and it can stimulate sweating to help drive out the infection. Mullen, scientific name is Verbascum thapsus. During its first year, it'll form a basal rosette like this, all flat on the ground with long leaves or well, four to 15 inch long leaves that are very hairy and lance shaped. Uh, this is the spring, so it doesn't have a flowering stalk yet, but you can often find the flowering stalk maybe from last year's growth. And mullen isn't really edible, but you can make a tea with it, but I would say the tea would be for medicinal reasons. And the main medicinal use of mullen is for respiratory ailments. It can help to clear it can help to clear uh, mucus from the lungs and sinuses to open up the airways and you can make a tea from it with fresh or dry leaves or you could smoke it. Daddy, you found some more mullen. Is there more over there? Looks like a couple of them. One, two. And what else is there over here? Dead nettles. Purple dead nettle, scientific name is Lamium purpurium. Since it's a member of the mint family, it has that square, characteristic square stem. All the leaves are fairly hairy, and uh, the leaves themselves, their shape could be described as triangular with round toothed edges. And uh, the lower leaves or the younger leaves are this green color, but then as it gets older, so the top leaves get a purplish color. And near the top also are these little blue flowers that are partially hidden by the leaves. And purple dead nettle is edible. The leaves and stems and flowers are all edible. They can be eaten raw or cooked, maybe added to soups or stews, salads, things like that. And also they are said to be medicinal, styptic to help stop bleeding, and they've also been used to help with things like constipation. Stinging nettle, scientific name is Urtica dioica. They have leaves that are sometimes triangular shaped, sometimes heart shaped, sometimes lance shaped or oval, but they have serrated edges, so fairly sharply toothed edges and pretty dark green, but the 
maybe the most distinctive feature is the stinging hairs on the stems and the undersides of the leaves and yes if you touch them and get hit by those hairs it'll leave a mark and that's a good way to test and make sure that you've got in here that way you can make sure you've got stinging nettle and i just got a couple stings there but stinging nettle is edible the leaves and stems are high in calcium magnesium iron vitamins a c d zinc potassium and more some people would call it a superfood uh, when you are harvesting it you should probably wear gloves and cooking avoid once you cook them it makes it so the sting won't sting anymore they're also said to be medicinal there is a pretty long list of medicinal uses but i'll just mention a couple uh, it is said that ingesting them can help to reduce seasonal allergy symptoms and it can also help improve kidney function and act as a blood purifier narrow leaf plantain scientific name plantago lanceolata also known as ribwort they are they typically there's a few plants here together but i think this one here you can see they grow in a basal rosette so in a circle that's flat on the ground in the early spring these are little it's early but they have these long veins that are lance shaped and they have prominent parallel veins they can grow two to six inches long now narrow leaf plantain is edible the leaves can be eaten raw or cooked the young leaves are taste better uh, but when they get older they can get kind of stringy so they might need to be cooked they are high in vitamin a c and k and some other vitamins and minerals and plant plantains are useful medicinally they are used for treating all kinds of skin problems like insect bites and stings sunburn poison ivy snake bites burns and cuts and also the part of the reason that they are helpful for these kinds of things is they are astringent so they can help draw tissues together to help close wounds but also to do things like say if you put it on a wasp bite to help to draw out the poison this is a narrow leaf plantain but and there are a whole bunch of other species of plantain and they are they can be used more or less interchangeably Chickweed, scientific name is Stellaria media. There are, they have these white flowers, which are actually five petals, but from a distance it might look like ten, but they're deeply cleft. And underneath the petals are these sepals. These, they're hairy and they stick out farther than the white petals. And they have a growth habit of forming a mat along the ground. Chickweed also has this unique growth habit. It has a line of hair, a single line of hair running along the stem between the nodes. So here, and it moves here, and then it hits the node where the leaves come out, and then it jumps position here. And it goes down to the next node where it changes position again. There, you can see it on the bottom side. Chickweed is edible. It's high in vitamin A and C and high in minerals like calcium, iron, magnesium, manganese, and niacin. It can be eaten raw or cooked. And cooking it can remove some of the saponins or saponins that if you eat too much of it can cause an upset stomach. And uh, chickweed can and has been used medicinally. The saponins that I just mentioned can also help the digestive system by regulating gut flora and it can help to ease constipation. Also, chickweed has been used externally for inflamed and itchy skin and a poultice made from the fresh plant material can help to draw out infections. And as the name implies, chickweed can be given to birds and chickens. I won't speak for the chickens, but I assume they like it. Early blue violet, scientific name is Viola adunca. 
and I'll talk about this violet in particular, but all violet species can be identified by their flowers. They have some common traits. They have five petals, one, two, three, three, four on the side, and one at the bottom. And this bottom petal, if you look to the side, goes to the back and sticks out the back. The next thing to look for would be along the stem, there are these two very reduced petals that you could miss easily if you weren't looking for them. And then the stem, which is called a peduncle, it has one flower at the top of it and has a kind of a bent part at the top. And so it has a J shape. This species is early blue violet, and so they have blue, or to, they have, the flowers are uh, blue to a deep violet color, and they have some uh, white marks on the bottom, three petals, and they also have, have purple veins. And early blue, or any violet, for any violet, the leaves, flowers, and stems are all edible, and they can be, be eaten raw or cooked, and they are high in vitamin A or C, and they can be used to make things like uh, syrups or jams. And uh, violets are also medicinal. They can, the leaves can be used to make a tea. You could boil water and uh, put it on the leaves and just let it cool. And that tea can be used to treat all kinds of skin conditions like rashes, wounds, eczema, and the tea, if you drink it, can also act as a mild laxative. Henbit, scientific name is Lamium amplexicoli. Another name for it is common dead nettle. They are members of the mint family, so they have a square stem, and the leaves near the top are stalkless, or stalkless, or they clasp the stem, so they wrap around it. Some of the lower leaves, or the younger leaves, do have stalks, like these ones, uh, but as it goes up, they become clasping and attached to the stem. They also have they have flowers, which come from the axle. That's the part where the leaf meets the stem, and the flowers can be pink to dark purple. Now, henbit is edible. It can be eaten raw or cooked and tastes uh, sweet and maybe a little peppery. And uh, they are high in vitamins and iron and fiber. They also have some medicinal uses. They are said to have some laxative properties and be anti-rheumatic, so they could be helpful with joint pain. Cleavers, scientific name is Gallium aparine. Some other names it's got quite a few are bed straw or sticky willy. It has a square stem and it has a growth habit of, like the stems are weak so it kind of can fall along the ground and uh, form like a ground covering mat or they can cling to things like other plants nearby and be upright or to each other. And the leaves come off of it in a whorl, so they come from the stem and they go in a circular pattern out from the stem in groups of six to eight. And at the end, they have a point, kind of rounded and then a point at the end. And the most uh, recognizable thing about them is they stick. They just really stick to whatever's around them, your clothing, animals, you name it. And these are young, but you can start to see some flowers are emerging from the stem there. So, cleavers are edible. They are related to coffee, so the seeds can be dried, roasted, and ground and used as a coffee substitute. And uh, the young leaves are edible. They can be cooked and they are high in vitamin C. They are also, uh, have some medicinal uses. They, a tea can be made from the leaves, which has been used as a cure for scurvy and also the tea has been used to promote urination to help clear deposits from the bladder and the kidneys. Burdock. Scientific name is Arctium species and this one here is a common burdock. Scientific name is Arctium minus and it has a uh, a couple stages of growth. This in the early spring, the leaves will look like this with undulating edges, heart shaped. It has little hairs on them, but on the flip side, oh, look at that, a little snail friend. <laughs> and then the, we compare the sides of the leaves, the top is pretty green, whereas the bottom is very white. And later, its growth, uh, later in its whatever growing season, 
So these are from last year. These are the flowering stalks. And what's left over are the burrs, the seed pods. So in the spring, if you want to be able to find them from a distance, you can look for some of these hanging around. Anyway, burdock, common burdock is edible. All parts are edible. The young leaves can be eaten, but they can be pretty bitter. So they'd probably need a water change or two to eat them. Uh, and the young stems can be eaten. They kind of taste like asparagus. Uh, but the root is what most people are maybe interested in. And uh, the root is edible. It can be eaten a number of ways, peeled and sliced or cooked in a stir fry, or the roots can be roasted and ground up and used as a coffee substitute. Burdock is also medicinal. It is considered an alterative, so that means it has body balancing effects. So the root tea can be used to purify the blood and it also can help to detoxify the liver, kidneys, and the lymphatic system. Chicory. Scientific name is Chicorium intibus. In the uh, early stages of growth, they grow on a basil rosette, and the leaves are kind of dandelion-like. Uh, they are more tend to be more rounded. They're lance-shaped, more rounded. Uh, but one of the ways you could tell them apart from a dandelion leaf is the bottom side of the leaf. It tends to be fairly hairy, especially along the main vein. And I'll find a dandelion here. Here's a dandelion growing nearby. If you look at the bottom side of the dandelion, it's pretty much hairless. Later in the season, you'll see flowering stalks like these. These are left over, so you can't see it, but there will be little white flowers all along the stems. So if you see these things hanging around, then what's underneath is uh, you'll, you'll likely find some chicory. Here, more for contrast, uh, chicory leaf, typically rounded. And dandelion leaf, often, they're both very variable, but dandelion often more toothed like that. And the uh, chicory flowering stalk hanging out right there. Chicory is edible. The leaves are high in vitamin A and C. They can be eaten raw or cooked. They can be a little bitter, so might need a water change. And the roots are also edible. They are a good source of inulin, which is... Inulin, which is a good source, uh, uh, which is a prebiotic fiber. And it can be good for gut health. Uh, and the roots can be medicinal, have some medicinal uses. The roots can be dried and roasted and used as a coffee substitute, which has been used to treat liver problems and is slightly sedative and said to be a mild laxative as well. Prickly lettuce. Scientific name is Lactuca seriola. They start out growing in a basil rosette and the leaves could be described as dandelion-like, lance-shaped, but they are highly variable. So sometimes the leaves have, they are uh, lobeless, like this one, or they can be, and these are young, but later on they might be more deeply lobed along the edges. But if you want to distinguish it, look for, let's see if we can show, look for spines along the margins and on the underside, spines along that main vein, running up the main vein there. So prickly lettuce is edible. They are, the young leaves can be bitter, but when they're young they're more palatable and uh, they can be eaten or cooked. And uh, the shoots, because it'll make a shoot, those can be eaten and cooked like asparagus. Speaking of the shoot, that can help you identify it, and I'll show you that. Speaking of the shoot, this is later on, it'll grow a flowering stalk or shoot that, that part's edible when it's younger, but it'll make flowers and seeds. So if you see some of these around, then you should be more confident that what you're looking at is a prickly lettuce. Wild lettuces have another trait. Uh, they, if you break them, they produce a milky sap. 
And this sap is something that makes this plant very interesting to some people. It is sometimes called uh, something like lettuce opium. And the sap can be collected and condensed to form a drug called latucarium, or lettuce opium, which is said to be pain relieving and sedative. It's said to be a weak alternative to opium that is not addictive. And it has been different uh, prickly lettuces have been used in various uh, commercial drugs. Dandelion. Catnip. Those are just a couple other springtime edible and medicinal plants that I did not cover that uh, you could find right now. Anyway, if uh, you like the video, please give it a thumbs up. Did I miss any plants that I should have covered? Why not let me know in the comments section below. And if you thought the video was useful, maybe you'd consider subscribing. Anyway, thanks for watching.